available, especially exclusive with really lo rather large heads on them. So what I want is... Yeah, well, there's only one logical place. There's some pretty wide spot between where the two clasps, you see there's one, I don't know if you can see it, but there's one clip, there's plastic clip still there. I can see if you take that screw out, then you can slide the thing and it would let go. But what, what's been done is two of them were broken. I broke the last one on this side. And that's uh, what was wrong. Okay, so I'm just going to put this one like, well, yeah, like right there. And this one. All right. There. there we go. <coughs> Guess I can lay the hammer <coughs> down over there this time. Now I shouldn't need. I shouldn't need. Uh, I may not need the. Yeah, I'm going to need the needle nose still. <coughs> I had kind of forgot. I used to do this when I needed to. It's not really, I, it kept, keep it from turning over and don't hurt yourself while you're, you know, while you're doing this. Needles work good, you don't squeeze too hard, but put it up close to the head is usually the best way to do it, and I was doing it. Where did I put my little mark? I don't even see it. There it is. I don't know if it's enough or not, we'll see. Anyway, just to keep it straight up. Keep it from doing that. Also, the, the punch helps. Sometimes they're falling off because there's so much metal. See, it's a magnet. Get it in your mouth. You don't want you up. This has gotten magnetized from being in there so long. Um, which is actually a good thing. Yeah, you'll get a little bunch of metal shavings on the end of it, and uh, it'll want to turn over every time. I think these are, might be some of those screws that we just want to do that anyway. They don't have very good Phillips in them. There we go. There's my spot. Let's try not to have the mic cord in there. Do that because I don't want it to get... I don't think it would, but yeah, I didn't think I'd break this either. Never even made my mind, so... It's walking. I didn't get a good punch. There we go. Got it. You don't, if you don't mind it walking a little, you don't have to have it punched, but I think I got away from my punch mark, but it went through in a reasonably good area. Yeah, so the front, where you, screws that come in on an angle to the, from the front, they, I'm trying to put my, I can't figure out where to put my hand in there. I don't think I can. Uh, they have metal brackets that they screw into. That's why they ain't broke yet. Okay. Well, now hopefully it'll be fixed up. Maybe it won't break again. If it does, it's liable to destroy what's left of that thing. Okay, you're going to have to switch hands. Oh, see my mark. There it is. There we go again with the mic cable. Well, I got this clip on here, and I don't usually use it for other things, but it got a little too much slack there, I think. But I'm going to try clipping it just up here on my shirt somewhere. I don't even, it doesn't matter if it's in the picture. I don't know if it is. To keep it from uh, getting in my drill. Can't seem to find the right place. There we go. Definitely when you're really working, you should have your... Either learn to stand to have it up in your shirt or put on another shirt. <laughs> I can't stand... I tried it and I couldn't stand it for two minutes. I knew I'd be that way because I've never been able to stand anything like that. Okay, I don't, I 
didn't get. It's funny because that's a good punch, and it actually didn't do as good as as the. Uh, I was using my punch this time and not the. Uh, let me do this. Oh, <laughs> that actually. I I left that. I kind of did it on on a reflex. I saw it going too fast, and I kind of shoved that further that way, and it stopped it from uh, going too deep. But it kind of got a little crooked when I did that too. Sometimes, well, you know, sometimes you're in a position where you can't actually let go of the trigger without dropping the drill. Uh-oh, it might have stripped it out. No, it didn't. This screwdriver, it's not the screwdriver, I don't think. It's a pretty, it's always been a good one. It's my favorite, but it is the one I use the most. could wear it out easily enough. Let's see what that tip looks like. Yeah, it's still all right. It's not fully covered with stuff. Well, it is worn, but yeah, it should still be grabbing good. It's magnetic too, so it gets a hold of stuff too. But the yeah, it made this, I made the screw crooked. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not flat all the way, but I'm not going to try to. I don't want to strip that plastic out. Yeah, these these little heads are pretty small. That's probably why they kept falling out of there. They're almost small enough you need a smaller screwdriver. I don't like those kind. What's funny is sometimes with computer parts you'll have a little bitty screw and you think you need that smaller screwdriver and it won't grab it because that the the Phillips part of it is actually pretty big. Some people now, a lot of people I see on YouTube, they like those uh, square head screws. I used thousands of them building cabinets. This is what we used from 78, 9 to 85, 87, 88. Ever. I was kind of, I'd go work at the cabinet shop for a few years and then back to General Dynamics during those years. But, uh, so I don't remember. But uh, they're a pain in the butt. Uh, I like Phillips had much better good ones. Uh, what would be nice is uh, the bad thing about them is you really have to learn how to drive them or you'll snap the head off every time you drive one. And maybe it's easier with these impact wrenches. I've noticed, I kind of noticed it by watching the videos, but now that I've got one, it's quarter inch impacts, uh, they seem to kind of clutch I guess you would say I don't that thing has a clutch on it I hate it I learned how to use a regular drill just a plain old reversible drill and you learn how to do it by pressure this one it's a little different than controlling it a regular electric you know plug-in drill 110 volt drill but still I set it on uh, it might have been good to put it on uh, I do sometimes use screw this is how the hammer drill drill and a screw for, for driving screws and you can slow it down and speed it up. And, and if you, this here will be the clutch, is the clutch. If you take it to where it gets loose, I hate that. Uh, it's just terrible to work with. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, like just now, I might, yeah, it was going really fast, especially with that big old battery. I probably would have been, uh, well, but the thing is, I was using the, really, I needed it in drill mode. Go back, back up. Because I was drilling a hole with a bit that's not the super sharpest drill ever, you know. So I had it where I needed it. So anyway. Uh, but yeah, it almost got me. It was going fast enough that I almost... I was, I, was, I, knew, I, I could tell I was in an awkward position. I think I was pulling the trigger with my thumb and I wasn't going to be able to let go of it quick. So I just I, I just kind of learned to do that over the years. I to somehow, without thinking about it, you know, just move that... Move those vice grips in a little further and make them thicker so that it stops it. And it did, and it did but it also... Well, I think that's what made it get crooked. That's what I'm trying to say. But the impact one, man, it'll, it'll run them down before you, you know what you're doing. Okay, so uh, everything looks good. I think while I got this opened up... I'll uh, run that drum around and make sure the belt didn't flip over or anything like that. It could run just, it would probably wouldn't even notice it 
you know, it wouldn't make any kind of no noise or anything. Sounded like a I wonder if that was that piece that I heard go flying because I would expect a, a piece to be in here, not maybe somehow some of that plastic went. Uh, I saw something fly over that way and I never did find it. Oh, one of the things making noise is I don't know which one it is. One of these is good. One time I think I tried to get these off, these tumblers that are inside. You just take these screws off, you would think, but. I don't think I could get the screws all the way out. I didn't want to come all the way out. It seems like I remember that. But there's a lot. I'm sure it's a coin that got in there because stuff will slide up under the edge of them. Been in there for many years now, and I've never. I've always bugged the crap out of me. Could be more than one, because I'm hearing it knock this way and that way as I go over. I don't know. I think I heard it real good, like right up here. There may be several of them in there. I didn't think about that. But this job has been so big, I haven't wanted to tr tackle trying to do that. That's what happens pretty much every time while it's been in there so many years. I think I went plasma. There it is. I was looking at the, le uh, the lettering on the belt. It all looks good. It's lined up. Okay, so let me shut the lid, I guess. Yeah, so this is back on here now. Just don't move the dryer with it. Oh yeah, I still gotta put the uh, still gotta put the uh, deal back on there. There we go. Now I'm gonna leave it right where it is, and I'll take my camera around there while I put back the other direction. While I put the uh, can't get it out of here without leaning it like crazy. Okay. That tripod legs can get pretty big, but that's all right. That's the way I want them, so that I can uh... there it is. Not sure. Yeah, I got to put that that cover back on there. There's those screws for that. My new screws I can put up. I've got two left now. Or my ones I've used as new screws. Step on that cable and do something bad. It's shaking the camera. Let me put them up. I actually had six of them and I used four of them. So that turned out good. I still have a pair. But I'm in the middle of drying clothes. I just wanted to check that vent. And I thought I would, I was thinking it was probably okay and I'd be able to just go back to washing and drying clothes. But now, well, I can now, but I'll, after breaking this, it's definitely a lot longer than I expected to get back to business. I guess I am doing, doing my business right now, though, will I? Okay. Taking care of business. Let's see. Uh. Yo, I put them in this little, in the little cup. There we go, I'll put them on there. Now all I need is the nut driver. Where are you? You're in my pocket. There. All right. Now, everything look good with that? No wires got pulled or anything, did they? <laughs> then I, I, all of a sudden I thought, "Ooh, is that unplugged?" <laughs> yeah. Good time to remember after you've been grabbing the connectors on the wire. It's been unplugged ever since it started. This part here. It doesn't slide with that. There's two little clasps on the top. 
Once you get them in there, it don't slime. Let's see if we can get this lined up pretty good before I put them in there. Now if I'm lined up good enough, let's see, and where, did I get my scratch all? No, I didn't have it, I have it out. I'm going to go get it. I needed to line that up. Okay. Check my everything. Okay. Check the video. I can kind of see the beginnings of the hole there. There. Figured I could move it over with the. Thought I could. I think it doesn't want to, oh, I see. That was too high. Right there. What about this one? Was it too high? Yes. You can actually get it in there up above the, uh, there. That's the main reason it wasn't moving now. Oh, yeah. I had it in a spot that, like in between the very bottom of this thing and where it needed to be. So it was not letting it slide at all. And I thought that was a little odd. I didn't think those would be so tight to keep it from sliding. And that wasn't the problem. I was getting them. That's why I was having a hammer of the bottom end because I was putting it in the wrong place. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's all just plastic, so you don't want it over tight. Yeah, it just... I didn't think it should be tight. I thought, well, did I really suck that up that tight with those sheet metal screws? But uh, I figured that... I was thinking that there's a little... The way it's made, it still has a little space there. Probably some kind of tab-like things that touch first. Okay, now... Uh... There that is, back on there. And uh, now I think we can put it back where it belongs. And I think this light can go out now. Okay. Moving that drop, the cord to the drop light, kind of get, trying to get it out of the way enough I don't trip on it. All right, you should be ready to turn on. And it's still got a big load of clothes in it that were, I would say, three quarters of the way dry when I decided to do this. I actually came out thinking, well, if I do it now, I will uh, still have light. I wanted light, you know, sunlight to shine down the pipe so it could help me see. And, of course, I didn't even get halfway near ready to do it until that way after that. I see something on the ground. I'm wondering if it's... No, that's some kind of tape or something. That's not my piece of plastic that came out of there. I don't know. Anyway, it was not good for anything, the piece that broke out of there. Yeah, and so don't... I'm not, remember not to push it by the plastic part. Especially when it's full of clothes. That makes a big difference. Let's see, is that a good spot for it? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, there they are. I was thinking about those water balls that used to sit right here beside it, and now I see where they are. But, uh, that's actually even with that pipe, so I don't know how they fit there. Okay. I don't think I'm going to put them back. They don't seem to be in a bad spot where they're at now. I'm going to leave them there for now. They were kind of 
I don't know. They were sort of in the way there where they were at. They were in the way if you move this, that's for sure. Got 30 minutes left on there. So I had done, I'd set it for 100, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. 70 minutes of a huge load, and that's about what I would expect. And then there's 10 minutes of drying left, and 10, well, 20 minutes of drying left, and 10 minutes of cool down. I think I probably need more than that. Let me fill of them again before. I, well, if I open the door and shut it, it'll come back on. Let's turn it to off. I think it'll come back on. There's still enough dampness in there. I don't think 30 minutes would do it, so I'm gonna go 60. My deal's still a little loose. It'll still move between 60 and 70 backwards, but it's working. I don't know why it's loose. It doesn't make sense, really. Unless it got turned before it completely dried and it loosened it up. Because it shouldn't... I mean, I just... I didn't do any forcing on it or anything, you know. I just came out the next day. I don't know. You never know when you're trying to glue something like that. But anyway, it works. And if I, if it gets any looser, I'll try it again. All I have to do is drill it out and put more epoxy putty in there. Here, I have a, at least one of those metal inserts that they used to always put in these kind of things. To well, What they do is they'd have an oval hole in there, sort of oval, and the insert would fit in there, and so... It made it, and then it, um, it it did the work on here, and it it just made it just made it stronger, last longer, you know. Unless the whole thing broke, your ha it work your handle your knob would last longer. If you see any, well, fifties fifties radios and maybe older, yeah, I guess on back further to when they were using. Well, they used Bakelite in the fifties, and up into the sixties they would put those metal inserts in there. But there it goes, it still, still rattles a little bit, but it's uh, from that change in the deal, but I think I'll get, I think I'll get this, uh, get this bit out of here right now. So that I don't, uh, I guess I'll take this out too, so that I don't, you know, if I drop that, I'll bend it. So I'm going to put you in your place, let's see, now I'm room in this little bag, my big bag would probably hold it all, it sure would be heavy though, because it's got other stuff in it. I don't really have room for that big bag, and I'm keeping this in the house because the the cold weather is very bad. These do not these lithium ion batteries don't hold up good to cold weather. They'll go down, and if you let them get too low for too long, especially in cold weather, that will kill them. That's why sometimes people have so much trouble with them. I found out watching a bunch of videos. So uh, just gonna put that right there. all this down here and so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is uh, go ahead and put my new box over here and I'm debating about whether I just want to quit the video now I might let it run a little longer while the video's going and make sure everything's good. And me being out here to look. I mean, it's already, I don't I know, at least two loads, maybe three or four yesterday. Well, I guess it was the day before yesterday since I sat 24 hours. Well, I was just, I went to bed. I ate and went to bed by the time I did that and got a bath and all that, got a shower. By the time I did all that, it was, uh, you know, it was being used. So, uh, here's my knife. I'm going to go ahead and get that tape that's sticking out off of there 